Ladies and gentlemen, federal employees, welcome to today's episode where we're talking about the three hidden costs that you will have on your FEHB, your health insurance in retirement as a federal employee. And we're going to talk at the end, is it all worth it? Because again, there's a lot of hidden costs that come into play. Is it worth it for you? Okay, so if you're new here, welcome. Great to have you. My name is Dallin Haas. I'm a financial planner who serves federal employees just like you every single day to help you retire comfortable and confident. Let's dive right in. Sneaky cost number one. When you move into retirement, the price you pay for your FEHB technically stays the same. And, and let me walk you through what I mean by that. So let's say you're on a Blue Cross Blue Shield plan or a Kaiser plan or an Aetna plan, whatever plan you're on, just because you retire, the price doesn't increase. Okay, the premium price. For example, if you're if you're price is $500 a month while you're working, the price is going to be the same while you are retired. But as you know, the plans can increase their prices over time, but you still get the same price retired or still working. So that benefit is a great, great benefit. So where is the extra cost that come into play? Well, while you're working, you can actually get a tax deduction for your health insurance premiums. So what that looks like is let's say you make $100,000 a year. If you pay $5,000 a year in health insurance premiums, you're taxed as if you only made $95,000. So you actually pay less in taxes while you're working, okay? While retired, that benefit does go away. So while the, let's say, let's say you're still paying $5,000 a year in health insurance premiums, in retirement, you're going to pay a little extra in taxes. So the net is maybe you still only pay five grand a year in health insurance premiums, but maybe your taxes go up by a thousand a year because you don't get that tax tax deduction anymore. So again, it's sneaky, right? It's sneaky. It's around the back where you don't technically pay increased premiums, but you do pay extra taxes because you do not get that deduction. Okay. So that is number one is it's sneaky. It's around the back, but it's, it's basically while you're working, you get to pay your health insurance premiums pre-tax while retired. It has to be post-tax, therefore increasing your taxes. That is number one. Next, the next sneaky cost for health insurance into retirement is going to be Medicare. Now, I'm not sure exactly when, of course, you are going to retire, but most federal employees that are traditional retire anywhere from 57-ish to 70, right? That is generally the range. Now, if you're a special provisions, you certainly can retire earlier as well. So, once you turn 65, though, Medicare is going to come into play. And I've got some other videos about do you need both Medicare and FEHB? But long story short, I mean, if you really want to know, go check out those videos and get the full in-depth explanation. But long story short, when it comes to Medicare and FEHB, a lot of federal employees get both, right? They have FEHB and they have Medicare. And if you pick the right plans, you could find very, very cost-effective combinations, okay? But... Many people don't, right? Many people end up paying more for Medicare and they still keep a, a expensive FEHB plan. So if you're not careful, you're going to have to pay for both. And so Medicare on top of your FEHB can be an extra cost. So go definitely go check out that other video so you could find some strategies on keeping those costs down for both Medicare and FEHB. Okay, so definitely check that out. So that was number two. Let's jump on to number three. So number three, again, is sneaky. It is around the back just a bit. So when it comes to health insurance into retirement, it is such a great benefit to have. However, one of the most important things is to make sure that first, you can keep health insurance in, into retirement, but also if something happened to you, you want your spouse to keep it into retirement as well. And how do you do that? Well, the way you do it is to elect survivor benefits at retirement. If you've never heard about survivor benefits, again, I've got videos on that going through the different options. But long story short, long story short, for you to let your spouse, who let's say in this example is a non-federal employee, if you want them to be able to keep your health insurance after you die, which the vast majority of the time you do want to do that, then you have to elect survivor benefits, which means your pension while you're both alive is going to be smaller. It's going to cost you a piece of your pension while you're both alive. So if you died first, she would first be able to get a piece of your pension and, or not she, they, it, he or she, right, um, would be able to keep a piece of your pension and keep your health insurance into retirement, okay? So long story short, 
for your spouse to be able to keep health insurance into retirement, it's going to cost you either 5% or 10% of your pension, depending on which survivor benefit option you pick. So for you to keep health insurance into retirement, that's great. But for your spouse to be able to keep it beyond you, it's going to cost you from your pension. So again, if you if you aren't familiar with that and you're married, I would definitely go check out my other videos on survivor benefits. So again, those are the sneaky extra costs that you might experience when you are in retirement when it comes to FEHB. Again, let's recap. Number one is while you're working, you get you get pre-tax um, FEHB. After retirement, you have to pay taxes on your full income and you can't deduct your FEHB premiums. Okay, that's number one. Number two is Medicare and extra costs that can be associated there, can increase the cost to have health insurance into retirement. And number three, to be able to allow your spouse to keep FEHB into retirement, then you often have to have a survivor benefit, which is going to cost money out of your pension as well. So at the end of the day, is it worth it? Is it worth to keep FEHB with all these other extra costs that come in play? And the vast majority of the time, yes, it is It is worth it to keep it even with these extra costs because it's such a great benefit. If you wanted to get the same sort of plan on your own, it would be so much more expensive on average about three to four times what you're currently paying now okay so it certainly is worth it now if you have other options like tricare or tricare or outside coverage that that's a different story but if it comes to fehb or getting insurance on your own there's no question fehb is an incredible benefit to have especially moving into retirement. So I hope that's helpful. If you have any questions, there's a link in the description below to submit those where we will answer your questions in future episodes. So I hope that's helpful. Have an incredible rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time.